Hello and welcome back to Dragon Quest Ball Tutorials. I am Koichi GZ, and in this video, I want to go over the Hokura of the Necromancer. So that is going to be the new Hokura ruler. But first, the one thing that I want to do is actually go over uh, some accessories from the uh, Alchemy Journey. So pretty much over here, if you look in the quest uh, event section, right over here. So here. This is going to be the alchemy journey for uh, upgrading the water amulet. So um, I actually have completed this uh, pretty much off video and actually have gone over or have created the demon orb uh, plus plus. So that's going to be the max level. So uh, here what I want to do is actually go over those real quickly. So those are going to be in my inventory. So going to be, let's see over here in accessories and the first one's going to be right over here so this is going to be for the water amulet so the water amulet is basic stats are going to be the plus 10 to your max mp plus 8 to your attack power then here going to have two abilities plus 10 percent to shadow weapon and physical technique damage and also plus 10 percent uh to for paralysis resistance so that's actually going to be an upgrade from the previous uh weapon or accessory then over here going to have uh, the demon or plus plus so here pretty much like the other um orbs that we have gotten through the alchemy journeys uh, you're going to have plus 30 to your max hp and then plus 10 percent to uh the specific uh type of enemy this orb is meant for in this case this is going to be plus 10 percent damage toward demons so that's going to be that there so here i'm going to go ahead and lock this in so uh besides that here now what i want to do is actually go over uh this particular uh hokura ruler but first i want to take a look at my team so this team should look somewhat familiar uh very recently um we've had the journey of awakening for the hell caster so i had a pretty good uh team that dealt uh, decent damage to all enemies and i feel that that team or this particular team at, at their full potential should be able to get through the special class level 60 necromancer hokura without having a healer on the team so that's going to be this team here so um going to be uh slightly different uh than when the than the recording so uh before i had a ninja and three druids but this time um i'm going to have a ninja and three other different classes so i actually have leveled up um my druids to level 75 so over here going to have my ninja equipped with the uh lamias whip so with this this is going to do uh mirror damage uh to the enemies so uh pretty much uh the necromancer is going to be weak to uh mera and zaba but here with mera this is going to actually be really good especially since you know that this is going to actually buff the next person with a limit break and also um increasing their skill and critical hit rates so that should be good there then here going to have a dragon equipped with the great sword of guard of darkness repelling light so this is actually going to be pretty good uh for both abilities actually um with the boggy damage this does um this is going to do good for healing or not healing but uh defeating the two side enemies that are going to be in this particular hokura and then uh with giga blade going to do some pretty good damage to uh the necromancer even though it's not uh completely uh weak to uh the dane damage this can actually do some pretty good uh damage to that enemy then over here going to have a god hand equipped with the uh metal king great sword so with this this is going to do both shadow and dormant damage but here pretty much mainly going to be using it for the shadow damage so with the shadow damage um that's pretty much going to be for the uh again the two enemies on the side those are going to be the suspicious shadows so um 
taking those out uh, right away in the beginning that's actually going to be uh very useful for this particular battle so hopefully um you'll actually get to see uh this in action and then over here here i'm going to have a demon swordsman equipped with the uh flail of destruction so again this is going to have uh both boggy and eel based uh attacks so with this uh here pretty much again going to want to take out the side enemies and then focus uh attacks on the necromancer so that's going to be that there so if you want to know more about this team you look down in the video description down below but now i want to go ahead into uh look at this hokra and right over here for the necromancer so here uh in the previous video i actually did go over the necromancer a little bit in terms of what it's weak to and then also what uh to expect for it in terms of the uh, status effects used so you're gonna have fear uh, illusion and then you're also going to have silence as well so um, besides that uh, here the necromancer is going to be a zombie type enemy have around 175,000 uh, HP two to three actions per turn weakness is going to be Mera and Zaba so uh, here uh, its biggest attack or most troublesome one going to be uh, Hagashi Otokebi, which is Fierce Roar, that does around 210 physical damage to all characters and has a chance to cause fear. So going to lose a turn, that's actually going to be uh, very, uh, that's actually going to be very devastating, especially if many of my characters uh, get hit with that and uh, are feared. After that, its next ability is going to be called Shirio no Nageki, which is Lament of the Dead. This increases spell and breath power of all allies by two ranks. So this is actually going to be uh, quite devastating since the... Um, both all uh, so uh the two side characters the suspicious uh shadows are going to be using both breath and spell damage plus the necromancer does use spells as well so um that actually is going to be uh very tricky to get through if uh he actually pulls this off after that it's going to have a shirio no uh kosh Koshin, which is going to be procession of the dead this gives the suspicious shadows resistance to death being left with one hp and also increases their agility by one rank after that uh the necromancer is going to have eonosum which is going to do about 210 eo spell damage to all characters it's going to have a magic counter which reflects bells back at the caster going to have a regular attack which does around 270 physical damage to uh, one character and then going to also have a zaudaru uh, which revives a fallen ally with 50 percent of their hp so um the necromancer will only use this when both of the uh, suspicious shadows are actually down so now i want to go over the suspicious shadow enemies so these are going to be elementals going to have around 34,000 hp one to two actions per turn weaknesses are going to be boggy and shadow so their biggest ability is going to be uh kogoyeru fubiki which is ice storm that does around 380 shadow breath damage to all party members it's also going to have a mahado which does around 270 shadow spell damage to all characters then it's going to have an uncle Kokunokiri, which is a dark mist. This has a chance to inflict attack reduction, uh, spell reduction, and illusion. So um, that's actually going to be a major debuff, especially on my characters, uh, since all of them are going to be using uh, forceful attacks on the enemy. Then it's also going to have a regular attack that does around 300 physical damage to one character. Okay, so sorry for the weird transition right there. So uh, I actually had some problem with the recording that I actually made earlier. So I'm actually making a different recording uh, for the latter half of this particular video. But here the notes uh, for this particular Hokura are going to be uh you want to use protective shields to prevent from being debuffed with fear and dark miss also you want to use skills that deal damage to all enemies besides that you want to use skills that deal multiple uh attacks to combat the death resistance buff on the suspicious shadows but um also you want to equip gear souls and soul pearls that will deal damage to zombie and elemental type enemies 
So pretty much uh, with the team that I am using, it is possible to win with no healer, but it is also risky since I am relying on specific uh, circumstances to occur during the battle. So definitely taking out the actual suspicious shadows uh, in the first round before uh, the necromancer can do any actions, that's actually going to be quite important. So uh, hopefully I am able to do that. But with that said, here we go. Okay, so here we go with this battle. So let's see what happens here. So in this case, most likely my ninja is going to go first. So going to go ahead and attack. So here, got a shadow weave on one of the shadows. Got a critical hit there. Here, going to go ahead and use battle demon release. So there, taken out, and here going to go ahead and use Extreme Karma. Okay, not a whole lot of damage there. Well, here goes Yonazun. So there goes the Fear. So actually my ninja is actually uh, feared. So here, but ooh, with this here, possibly my dragon could do some pretty bad da good damage. We'll see. So 77,000. Nice. So a fear again. So, okay, good. So that... With that there, uh, the shadow was taken out, preventing it from taking another attack. So here, oh yes. Most likely here, one character is going to die. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this Hokura is worth 27,090 XP. So the Necromancer is a green soul, and here I got a D. Okay, so that was my battle against the Necromancer with this team with pretty much no healer. So pretty much uh, my strategy actually did work out. Um, the one drawback that happened was uh, my uh, dragon actually did lose control. And uh, with that... Um, it actually uh, finished off the Necromancer, but also killed my Demon Swordsman at the same time. But uh, with that, even besides that, uh, things actually did go well. But uh, pretty much uh, using healer would definitely be much safer and almost guaranteed a victory each time. But if you have higher level characters in the equipment that I do have here, um, that actually probably would work out well. You might want to try it. Um, also, having on the uh, three dragon gringo whip would also be definitely good for your strategy as well. So what I want to do now is actually go and check out uh, the new soul here. So this is going to be for the Necromancer, which is going to be right over here. So the Necromancer is going to be a green soul. So with green souls, uh, you're going to have um, usually high stats and max HP, max MP, and your uh, healing power. Here, max HP 155, that's pretty good. Max MP 107, but the healing power is only 75, that's pretty low. So this particular green soul is going to be used for boosting the HP of your uh, character, your healer most likely. Or even this probably would be good for a, I would say like a guardian. Then with the abilities here, here we're going to have a plus 7% to HP special skill uh, he, uh, effectiveness uh, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. recovery effectiveness for healing. We're also going to have plus 5% uh, resistance to zombies and plus 5% uh, fear resistance. So that's going to be this specific soul. So already have that locked in. 
so with that said that's going to be it for this video so um in terms of other videos coming up i probably want to finish off the uh last of the dark lord maps uh just to show you what it's like for that is going to be for the ultimate evil priest so uh please stay tuned for that but with that said i'm going to go ahead and end this video here so thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.